dodge bullets and knives and uh, the whole work. You don't have much time for teaching, but like I say, every day is very interesting. <laughs> it's like going to the movies. <clears throat> so we don't want to get too far away from the Federal Reserve System because what I'll, I really want to tell you about today is these consortium of central banks are set up to rob the population of the entire world. We hear about the third world and the developing countries and so forth. And uh, they're being robbed just the way people in Canada and the United States are. It's the same system. It works for everybody. And uh, that's why you send the uh, troops around to different countries to, uh, to institute some uh, vague purpose, some political purpose, which no one really understands and no one really cares about. But uh, what is going on is the grand Nazi scheme. There's only one political party in the world today, and that's called the Nazis. And uh, you say, well, Adolf Hitler died in 1945, and that was the end of the Nazi party. But that's because you don't, you've never been told what the origin of Nazi is. N.A. is uh, National Socialism, which was the German Nazis. And in 1923, um, there was a double agent who uh, came to Hitler and... Uh, he said to Hitler, look, your Nazi party is not, your, your National Socialist Party is not getting off the ground. You need an alliance. And he suggested that they, they ally with the Zionist Party. So the NA of National Socialism joined with the Zionist Party in 19, uh, the World Zionist Party in 1923, and ever after was known as the Nazis, NAZI. The ZI was for Zionists, but of course no one knew that, because uh, our popular mythology is that the terrible Nazis uh, were attacking the Jews. But what we were never told is there was a great schism in the Jewish community of the world between the Zionists and the non-Zionists. You see, the, the non-Zionists were the Orthodox Jews who believed you could not have a Jewish state until the Jewish Messiah came. They didn't acknowledge Christ as Messiah, so they were waiting for their own Jewish Messiah to come. Then you would have a Jewish state. And that Jewish state would rule the world. But uh, the Rothschilds in 1828 decided they couldn't wait for the Jewish Messiah. So they started what they called Reform Judaism under Moses Hess. And Reform Judaism said, yes, you can have a Jewish state before the Messiah comes. And the reason you could have it was the Rothschilds had made so much money, they said, we'll buy our own state. So the Rothschilds sent... Uh, people out to the Middle East to, to have Jewish settlements, and uh, which is today the state of Israel, totally created by the Rothschild money. And uh, so Reform Judaism then became uh, the cause of a great schism between Orthodox Jews and Reform Jews. Now, no one has ever told you this, I'm sure, but uh, you think that uh, the Jewish community is monolithic. In fact, it's split sharply down the middle. But even today, uh, they have riots in the uh, Jewish parliament between the Orthodox Jews and the Reformed Jews. And uh, they cannot agree on anything because the basic premise is a fundamental disagreement over uh, whether a Jewish state should even exist today. So in Germany in 1923, the German Jews were quite prosperous and quite happy, and they were not interested in becoming uh, Zionists, and they were not interested in going to Palestine. After all, they had beautiful mansions in Germany, uh, they had symphony orchestras, they had art, they had everything, and they were accepted in the community. As Ezra Pound said, uh, the, uh, Germany was the least anti-Jewish uh, country in Europe. Uh, when you went over into Poland and Russia, you had very strong feeling against Jews. But in Germany, they were accepted and happy, so why would you ever have an anti-Jewish government in uh, Germany? And, of course, Hitler, allying himself with the Zionists, he said, after all, you're right. He said, we have the same goals. And um, so he allied with the Zionist uh, party. And the mission of the Nazis was to force the anti-Zionist Jews to accept Zionism. And this is what the concentration camps were about. They put the anti-Zionist Jews in the concentration camps, and they were placed under the direct administration of the Sonderkommandos, who were the Zionist Jews. So the concentration camps were run by the Zionist Jews in order to punish and uh, get rid of the anti-Zionist Jews, which they did. And, of course, that's a part of the Holocaust that you were never told, that uh, 
this was a fundamental uh, Jewish uh, disagreement, which the German people, now Daniel Goldhagen wrote a book in which he said, all Germans uh, cooperated in their anti-Jewish feeling and the Holocaust, which was not true at all. The Germans did not even know what was going on, most of them. It's just like in the United States, when we were perfecting the atomic bomb and bombed Hiroshima and Nagasaki, uh, the American people knew nothing about it. It was forbidden to mention the atomic bomb. I was serving in the Air Force at that time. We never heard of any atomic mission or atomic bomb until the bomb was dropped on Hiroshima. So uh, you could say the American people are guilty of the greatest atrocity, the dropping of the atomic bomb on Japanese civilians. But that isn't true. The American people knew nothing about it. I knew nothing about it in the Air Force. And I was right there. So um, these things go on without the knowledge of the people or the approval of the people. But of course, they have to accept the results. These things happen and you, well, you're stuck with it. So this is the real story of Zionism that the Nazis so then, well, if the Nazis had allied with Zionists, why didn't the Nazi party survive? Well, what happened was, in 1945, after the German military was defeated, they brought in the German leaders, the German generals at the Nuremberg trials, tried and convicted and executed them. They had to execute them because they didn't want them around to testify that the, uh, about the alliance between uh, the Nazis and the Zionists. So they had to die, and they were executed for that reason. Because, oh, they, they told about the atrocities that the uh, German generals had uh, uh, committed. But German generals are like any other generals. They don't really commit atrocities. The troops under their command may commit atrocities, but they don't commit any atrocities themselves. These German generals didn't go around shooting Jews or anybody else. But uh, they were executed, and so the Zionist secret was safe that, uh, and now, the Zionists were now in command of the world because uh, their National Socialist allies were now gone from history and uh, the Zionists uh, had a free reign, so they set up the state of Israel. And in fact, some Jews themselves even claim that there should be a statue to Adolf Hitler in, uh, uh, in uh, Israel because he created the state of Israel, which is absolutely true. <laughs> Without Ad Adolf Hitler, Israel would not exist. The Jews would still be dispersed and they would have no country. But uh, George Steiner, a very famous Jewish writer, proposed this about 10 years ago. He said, why don't they put up a statue to Adolf Hitler in uh, uh, Israel? <laughs> well, they're not likely to. And, uh, because there again, the big job of the criminals is to keep the truth from the people. They want, not only do they want you not to find out anything, but they flood you with disinformation. Most of the stuff that you get in the press is absolute lies. And if it's not lies, it's spin or distortions. In other words, they, they uh, give you 10% of the truth and the rest is all distortions. And, uh, and they demonize people so that you're filled with anger against the, uh, the Holocaust people who, who murdered all the Jews in Germany. And... Um, <coughs> And people do get very angry because of these things. And uh, they don't even know what they're angry about because they're not told the facts. And never will be told the facts because the press is totally in the hands of the bankers. Because uh, news is a high-budget, capital-intensive operation. You need a lot of money. You need a staff covering the whole world. And uh, it's a very expensive situation. So the average truth seeker is not going to start his own television station or newspaper because uh, he doesn't have the hundred million dollars that you need to even get it off the ground. So uh, we're reduced to meetings like this, which are very good. And we also, uh, God apparently was merciful on us and he gave us the internet. <laughs> in fact, in the States we had this total monopoly of television by three uh, television networks, which were all controlled by Zionists. And uh, so along came cable, and suddenly we had uh, all, all new stations and all sorts of controversial programs coming on, which, of course, the three Zionist networks would not touch with a 10-foot pole. And uh, the result was they were left behind. They now, they had 100% of the television audience. They now have 